one of our favorites, <clears throat> not only on this show when you called in and previously appearing on this show, but back in the day on the uh, Rich Eisen Show podcast from the NFL Media Group from which this show was born, the All-Pro Center. Entering his ninth season with the Carolina Panthers, formerly from USC, here is Ryan Khalil. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, bud. I am so pleased that you took the time, anytime, but at this time, because yeah. this is your last day of being just a, a, a dad and a citizen of the world before you have to go back to work. Is that essentially <laughs> well, the case? Well, yeah. And what better way, by the way, to end the summer than on the Rich Eisen Show? I think that's the perfect I way. I think so. Don't you think that should be a requirement for NFL yeah, players? Yeah, why not? Just why not? That'll help out with booking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where I'm thinking. Yeah, I guess You know, so. there is an I and Rich <clears throat> and Eisen, Ryan. Um, so you leave tomorrow? I mean, is, I your, are you, is your, your stuff's packed up? Sent packed. Back? I still got like four workouts to do today before we head back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a big pet peeve of mine, the guys, the self-proclaimed warrior workouts on social media. Have, have at it, Ryan. Oh, J.J. Watt? Is, is this what we're going at? J.J. Watt? Yeah, he's one of them. He's he's actually the only guy I believe that's actually working out and doing all the things he says he's doing. Okay. <laughs> actually, I actually heard a story about him from some guys. Uh, you've done that show, The League, before? Sure, of course. And uh, I heard a story that uh, there was a couple other players who were guest stars on that show, mm -hmm. and uh, they showed up on set, and uh, they had to wait three hours to film because J.J. Watt disappeared to a local high school so that he could get a three-hour workout. So everybody's so everybody, cooling their heels, everybody's waiting just for JJ on the to just set, waiting for JJ finishing get, getting his sweat back. on. So, but what you're saying is there are NFL <sighs> players on social media as Fugazi workout warriors. Is that what you're saying, Ryan Khalil? I don't know Fugazi. I'm just saying empty cans make the loudest noise. Is mm. all I'm saying. Is all I'm saying. Hey now, yeah. all right. Uh, no, I'm sure there's plenty of guys who are doing that. I just, that's just not my thing. I don't know. Don't I, I back just, up now. Don't no, listen, moonwalk on me, Ryan. I just, you're just never going to see me post a picture of me post-workout with hashtag rise and grind, hashtag <laughs> pro bowler bust, hashtag eighth workout of the day. It's just probably, it's just not my style. Rise right? and I mean, grind. Rise and grind. That's the worst, grind. That is the worst one of them all. It's a great hashtag. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, we could do a whole segment. I'm sure you could find plenty of photos and just do a whole segment on the best hashtag. So you're showing up tomorrow to training camp? Is that what you, or no, you just we go start back? No, next week. We oh. go back. Okay, so you and your... Time you, adjustment with the whole fam. Three kids. Get acclimated to the humidity. So give me the, give me the, the Khalil caravan. What's going west to east starting uh, tomorrow? So it's myself, right? Super mom, Natalie. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then my three children, five-year-old Kennedy... She's my oldest, mm -hmm. uh, Chandler, mm -hmm. she's three. And then uh, my youngest, Cade, he's one. We call him Bam Bam. Bam Bam. Bam so you Bam, have a Bam. five, three, and a one. Three young kids and your yeah, wife, yeah. and you, you're you going to your, your spot in Carolina. Yeah. And then when do you check in? When do you go to uh, your training Thursday. camp? Thursday. Yeah, and you check Thursday. in, and you show up, and then you're off and, and then, running. And then, it, yeah. It take a deep breath, and you hope to exhale with confetti on your head in Northern California. That's, that's the plan, going on year nine, and that's... Now, you've got Cam all locked up now with nine, not you, but I mean, yeah, you yeah, as a Carolina, yes, right. the franchise. I got him locked up, too. You do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, now, tell me, who, who is Cam Newton? Describe Cam Newton to me, Ryan. So I disagree. He is actually kind of like a cheeseburger. He's super cheesy. Okay. <laughs> super cheesy. Uh huh. Uh, you know, he's he's really good, and then every now and then you'll get like a rogue jalapeno that you just like, you're not really feeling. You got to down it with a glass of water. Uh huh. No, Cam's the best, man. I, you know, I I was uh, very skeptical of him when he first got there, just because the only thing I knew about him is what the media talked about him. Uh, but he's won me over, man. He's he really has won my respect. He he he's worked <clears throat> harder than anybody I've ever played with. I mean, he's one of the first guys in the building, one of the last guys out. Um, you know, he's he's real flashy in front of the cameras, but he's not like that behind the scenes. He cares very much what his teammates think of him. Um, you know, his self-evaluation is, is one of the best I've ever been around. You know, he's the first guy to say, hey, I got to fix this about myself. And, and now, is that the, the one thing when you said that you were skeptical about him coming in because you only heard <clears throat> about what media was saying yeah. about him, the icon stuff at the Combine, that yeah, he still doesn't really... Exactly right. it's That still bothers him, I oh, know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So that's the sort of stuff you heard coming in that you needed to wait and see on with Cam? Is that what you're referring to? I think so, just because in my experience, the the flasher guys tend to kind of be that stereotype and mm -hmm. he he's not i mean i think he 
He's just kind of a big personality. He's just a really big kid is what you kind of find out. He's not as into himself as people kind of perceive, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, think, uh, I, think, I think it was a smart move by the organization to lock him up. I think he's the future of the franchise. And I think um, even though he's in year five, I think he's still got a, lot of, got a lot of growth ahead of him. What's he like in the huddle, Ryan? He's fun. He's fun. He's fun in the huddle. And, what do you and that's mean fun? been like he, I think as a quarterback, in certain situations, you want a guy that you can kind of, that's the guy everybody looks to. I know that's like, that's a cliche. Everybody always says that, but it's true. And I think the really good ones are the guys that set the kind of tone of whatever the circumstances are in a particular game. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, the hardest thing about football is not getting too high and then not getting too low to kind of stay like this. And, uh, and so it's been fun to watch him grow up and, and to see him command that out of the huddle and, and do a better job of kind of setting the tone. I'm here with Ryan Khalil of the Carolina Panthers <clears throat> here in studio on his final day in Southern California of 2015 mm. before he goes back to work in, Cal in Carolina. Did, uh, did your team miss Steve Smith last year? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, that's the hard thing about the NFL is, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that you play with for a long time. Sometimes you don't. Um, there is that kind of revolving door aspect of it that makes it tough. But so when you get to play with guys for a good amount of time, it's tough when they all leave. And, and uh, not only Steve, but a whole bunch of other guys, especially on the offensive line. I had some of my best friends who were on the O-line that I played with forever. And Jeff Hangardner, Jordan Gross, Travell Wharton, and then they all retired the same year. Mm -hmm. But with Steve, Steve, Steve Smith is more than just a receiver. <clears throat> He's more than just a number right. one threat. He is a heartbeat that many yeah. people... Uh, can be attracted to, and he can also get in the face of the opponent. Uh, did you miss that intangible? I did, but I didn't always miss when he was riling up the guys that I was having to block. So that, <laughs> mm -hmm. like Steve was like, you didn't really mess with him verbally, and he, you, when you kind of woke up the beast, you woke up the beast, but then he would start kind of getting chippy with like, Halote Nada, and I was like, hey, maybe, maybe just that corner guy that you have to... <laughs> <laughs> go run against, maybe just mess with him. As opposed to the big yeah, uglies across let's not, from you. Yeah, let's not, let's not wake up Chris Jenkins uh, mm -hmm. with the Jets. That's not. Yeah, that. that's one of those guys. I'm here with uh, Ryan Khalil here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So what, uh, what do you expect here in the NFC South? I know that's a large macro question, but this is a division that seems to change every single year. You were yeah. the first team to go back to back in the history of the division, yeah. and, you, and you barely, you barely cracked a, a, a barely avoided a, you know, the sub 500 situation yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that we only need seven wins to mm -hmm. get in the playoffs again. Yeah, I know. Be, seven, eight, and one <laughs> is. Yeah, that's a, that's an easier way to, mm -hmm. that's an easier way to get in. No, I, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of moves we made last year. Um, you know, we lost guys like Steve, and, and uh, um, yeah, there was a lot of transition, and, and we were kind of in a weird place with personnel. And then I think what we did this offseason is incredible. And we brought back Teddy Ginn and uh, some other guys, added a receiver, a Michigan guy. Yes, who, Devin Funches. Who I'm a huge fan of. Tell me about him. Great kid. Absolutely great kid. Incredible. Um, another hard worker. Um, He's a Michigan man, Ryan, right? I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're a Trojan. I know you yeah. fight on in all that right. sort of business. I understand, <laughs> right, right. but but right. Funch, but you have Funches and you got Kelvin Benjamin, <clears throat> who uh, you know uh, had some hamstring problems in the right. OTAs because he came in a little plump that's, potentially. That, well, yeah. that's that, that's, that's the word saying. on the street. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're saying. But yeah. if Funches and Benjamin, those are two huge guys for your huge guy on. Um, under center no, yeah. for yeah. you to be throwing to. Yeah, and then we have uh, we have Ted Ginn. And Greg uh, Olson. Greg Olson. Yeah, we, so we have, I mean, we have some uh, we have some good weapons. I think I think we're in a better place skill-wise than we were last year. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about it. I know. Riverboat Ron, uh, <laughs> does, he, does he really not like that nickname, Riverboat Ron? I don't think he liked it at first, which was a mistake to show, like especially around me, because I made sure that he heard about it. Is a that lot. right? Yeah. How so? How does that work? I'm just Ron? kind of a jerk that way. I don't know. I think I got it from some of the older guys mm -hmm. I played with, younger, like uh, like another one's Michael Orr. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like the he doesn't like being referenced as the blind as side. The blind side. So what do you do? I make sure everybody knows how much he looks like the actor that played him. <laughs> that seems to go really well with him. Um, yeah. So yeah, he loves that, but. Uh, no, yeah, Riverboat Ron. Riverboat Ron, he's yeah. not a big fan of it? No, he is now. I oh, mean, he's, is. like, fully embraced it. I think it's, like, his Twitter handle and... His Twitter handle. I think he, like, he put some trademarks coach. out on it and... Now, Ryan, uh, you're here on this program because not only do you give quality information <clears throat> and it's fun meeting you, 
but you get along with the Chris Command Center very well over there. I you do. Go, we go way back as a quartet, just chit-chatting. Have you heard about this burger draft that Chris Brockman holds on his birthday? I, I just heard about it recently over there. Now, yeah. uh, basically, a Brockman gets together on it. This is how you celebrate your birthday every year. Correct. The last three years. And and there's a restaurant here in town that apparently has uh, almost two dozen different types of hamburgers. A plethora. Ex of exotic bur craftsman burgers. PBJ burgers, all Got sorts it. of things that you wouldn't imagine would be a hamburger. And so instead of just going there and enjoying the fair, they come up with a list of names and an order, and like a fantasy draft, order a burger and then trade the rights to having a burger we that others might want. We cut the burger in half, and we do two rounds snake draft. Now, is this something you would care to be a part of, or you think this is the dumbest idea in the history of dumb ideas? So I think the idea behind it is fellowship. I'm a huge fan of fellowship. Okay. So I like that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm constantly having to keep weight on, so I, I get really antsy. I don't know, how long is this process, I guess, is the question I'd have to ask. Because I don't know long. if I could sit well, there for it, 20 it does, minutes. It does take 15 are... to 20 minutes for everyone to kind of think about their selections, make a yeah, selection, and no then there are me. trades that are happening. That's a no-go for me. Trades. So you, you've got the spicy <laughs> tuna burger, and you want the other burger. Right. And you want a quarter of this Swiss Alps burger. Hold on, hold on. Chrissy Teigen, though, will favorite your tweet. About the burger draft. Correct. Factor that in. Factor Correct. that into now, your liking. Now, hold on, event. Ryan. I'm going to extend to <laughs> you an invite for next year. Rich is so disgusted. <laughs> this, <laughs> is awesome. this is an official invite. If no, you want to come next year. Look, we're we're all. Um, how, how old are you now, Ryan? Thirty. You're thirty. You're a old young man. thirty. You're a thirty year old 30. man. You're a father of three, and we've got other things to do in life. And. <laughs> And you guys are now in your 30s as well, deep into your 30s after your birth. Mid 30s. I'm okay. not deep. I'm okay. deep. Okay. Okay. Come on. Now, deep. now we are we are at, at, in stages in life where if we want a Swiss burger, we order it and eat it, not sit there and let somebody else have the rights to it. And 20 minutes after learning they have gotten the rights to the burger you'd like to eat, you have a trade in some fantasy world. And then you finally get the chance there to eat what you wish. There was a New York Mile High burger that had corned beef and coleslaw on it, Rich. I don't mean to badger the witness, but you do have the floor now. So when, when did you first hear about this? Um, a couple of years ago when it was brought to my attention on the podcast. And how long have you guys been doing this for? This, is, this was the third year. Third annual. Uh, so is there something like you weren't invited to the first no, one? No, no, no. So I'm invited every year, which oh, I'm, very invited, he, I'm very touched by. I'm very touched by. You always politely decline. I politely decline. <laughs> oh he opts out. Seriously, because what happens, what are, because again, I'll just, this is the ultimate question. Right. The ramifications of you getting the burger you want <laughs> and or yeah. not getting the burger you want. <laughs> What are the ramifications of it? This is like trying to when explain all... gambling to someone. Like, yeah, we're just you, having a good risk time. Your money? Like, what? You're gonna get back the money you bet? Like, how is that fun? I want, it's exciting. I want a burger. It's exciting. Okay, what okay. are the ramifications of me not getting the burgers right? Hold on a second. Yes. You like regular baseball? Okay. Yes, yes or no? What do you mean yes regular no. baseball as opposed, you like watching as opposed to what? You like watching the New York Yankees. Correct. The New York Yankees, rooting for the New York Yankees, is like going out to dinner and ordering the meal yourself and eating it and enjoying it. Now, you also like fantasy baseball. Okay. Yes or no? Ryan, do yes you understand no? where any hold of this on, is going? Hold on, Rich. Yeah, do you see, do you see the logic? Yes, yes or no? It's they're not just you. It's every no. viewer and no, listener of the Rich Eisen Show. On the analogy, you're losing me a what little you, bit on the Okay, I'll and let a, you complete and, it. And fantasy baseball is like you're just pulling guys from all over the place. That's like the burger draft. You go in and you're just pulling things from all over the place. You're making trades. You're trying to make your plate as optimal as possible. And that's what the burger draft is all about. And having a great time. If you dialed up, there were two of us there, the 11 other guys who were there, one by one, they would all say the greatest night of their life. Is that right? Correct. Would they all be losers? <laughs> you have met a few of them mm. and they're not losers. <laughs> Many of them from the great University of Syracuse. I just feel bad if that's the greatest night of their life. Yeah, I would know. I know I'm the greatest night of their life. <laughs> it's it's not, oh, oh like, distancing like, himself oh, now. It's not the greatest night of his life because he's $100 lighter in the pocket because of it, because he made some ob 
insane bowling bets that he thought he could cover. Can you can you stay one more segment, Ryan? Sure. Or no, or, or you're like after I, listening to the too, no, to the this is too intriguing. to this discourse, you're like I can't wait to get to Carolina and do two a days. <laughs> <laughs> Please. This is far better than two a days. Ryan Khalil is here on the Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience. <laughs>